guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, Not Becca Katie9 POK here, and today we are doing a viewer requested video. Uh, I don't know if there's a better way to say that. It's a viewer request video. One of my viewers requested that I make a video. And it is on my fox hunt receiver that I built at Yoda Camp. And what my viewer was requesting, let me give you their call sign. I'm not going to try to say their name because I don't want to absolutely butcher it, but I can give you their call sign. VU3 BMT, um, Victor Uniform 3 Bravo Mike Tango. And what they requested is that I make a video showing the inside of this receiver and then they were going to like make a schematic from it. And I was like, you know what? Cool. Why not? I can make a video about this receiver. I can tell you like some of the things that I did while building it. I can explain some of the stuff about it. I'm not gonna like you know, I don't know everything, but I know some things, and I can show you guys about it. Maybe you guys can build something similar off of it. So, and without further ado, let's roll that awesome intro video. Alright, this is the... and... Um, whoa. This is the receiver, the ARDF receiver that I built in Yoda Camp. So looking at it on the outside, this um, right in here, these two little knobs, is actually a ferrite bar antenna. And then this button switches between the stick antenna and the ferrite bar, I guess it's called a whip antenna. And then the ferrite bar, which helps with um, figuring out which direction the signal's coming from. Because the whip antenna will tell you that it's coming from, let's see. I think it's the whip antenna that'll tell you it's coming from either this direction or this direction. And so you could be going this way, and it could be this way, and you could be going in the exact opposite direction. And then you turn on the ferrite bar real quick, and it'll let you know that it's actually this direction, and then you can go that way and find it. As far as I know, as far as I remember, I haven't done this in a while. I know that it switches and one of them tells you one of them. I could be wrong about that, though. Um, let's see. The power button is actually the headphone jack so you have to plug in headphones or a speaker that uses the headphone jack port I don't remember what it's called but in order to um, actually turn it on which is kind of nice and kind of not volume pretty self-explanatory and then this just tunes it so what you can do is you can turn like bring your transmitter and your receiver next to each other turn on the transmitter and then tune this until you can hear the transmitter and then go hide it and make sure you don't bump this so that you actually are listening to the right thing and you'll find the transmitter this back here is just a battery compartment it takes four AA batteries i almost said duracell but duracell doesn't actually matter they just have to be four AA batteries and i don't know what that does I actually don't. So if you do know what that does or can figure out what that does after I show you this video, please let me know. I am interested. Now, let's see if I can remember how to take this apart. I'm going to start by removing the power because, I don't know, it seems like the intelligent thing to do is to remove the power. So, power removed. There is a screw in there. Look at that. Genius level skills. Of course, it's hella stripped. Good job, Becca. Good job. Yeah, I got it out. Look at that. So, this is the top of the case. This is the ferrite bar I was mentioning earlier and the whip. This piece right here is just, like, the thing that uses the button. So, let's, let's explain this. One, if you look at the case and you look right there, you can see that it's got, like, a stress line. That's because I broke a piece off right there. This piece of plastic rests on this switch right here, and when you push it, it clicks the switch in if I can get it and you hear that click and that changes the antenna as long as it's held in so you were supposed to just have this piece and then you just hit it and it would click but unfortunately it didn't go far enough which is why I put this nice piece of paper in there which I just got out I also put the piece that I broke off in there too so let's see what this piece of paper is that looks extremely important I should keep that forever okay so come over here basically when I built it it was just a bunch of soldering I'd take the board out but that requires me desoldering these two connectors which are the power connectors which connect to the battery batteries and I don't want to like desolder them and not be able to resolder them because I remember that was like one of the hardest parts this LED right here just indicates that the power's on this is the headphone jack so fun fact the whip antenna is now loose because I unscrewed something oof Cool, <laughs> I got it undone. Sorry, there's gonna be a lot of random zooming in this. 
so here is the whip antenna a uh, basic simple you know it's an antenna and then it was connected by this screw right here it was connected to the receiver let's see this switch these two have little like screw heads in them and they're used to like to I don't know when we built it, we put all of the components on the board and connected everything and attached the ferrite bar and the whip antenna. And then we took it over to one of the other kids at Yoda Camp who was shown how to do this by one of the directors at Yoda Camp. One of the teacher, demonstrator, supervisor, I don't know, give them a name. The people there. The grown-up people there. And so the kid, whose name was Andy, was shown how to do it by the grown-up and then he was helping everyone and he was like moving these around and like setting it. And I don't know, it was like kind of tuning it. I'm not exactly sure what happened. I brought it over, he did the thing for it. So I don't really know what happened there, but it happened. <laughs> There's a little chip in here, which is probably, I don't know, what, what information would the chip have? I don't know, but this is the board. I'll give you a nice beauty shot of it just to make it easier to see. Board and it goes in just like that. And then these two are literally just wires for plus and minus. Let's flip it over so we can look at the traces. Oh, you can also see the traces glowing right here, which is cool. There you go. And I will put nice images in here. I don't know that much about it. I don't have the instructions anymore. Looking at this, it does have a link on here to www.ardf.cn. And this looks like it said Beijing in here, right there, which is, I think, let's, let's look at this. I don't want to get it wrong. China. Beijing is in China. I wasn't sure and I can't tell the difference between Chinese and Japanese alphabet character word writing. But yeah, so if you speak Chinese, um, you can read what this says and it might help. If you don't, I'm going to go to this website and see if it says anything interesting. So I went to ARDF.CN and it says right here, China Amateur Radio Direction Finding Web. This is literally just recording on the computer screen. And it's all in um, Chinese, which I don't speak. So I'm gonna Google Translate this, see if it says anything interesting. So I went a little bit further through their web page, translating things as needed, and I have found what I have. It, it's an orange, well, it's a little different on the front, but I think it's the exact same thing. Um, let's see what it says. Radio direction finder, in the use of short range radio direction finding movement, receiving frequency. 350 through 360, which checks out with what it says there. It says 3.6 millihertz, and that says kilohertz, so yeah. That seems like the math is correct for that. Is that a schematic? <gasps> Have I found a schematic? A pity that it's not in English. <laughs> but yeah, that looks like what I have. It even included the headphones. Yep, everything checks out. So yeah, that is a p picture of the board with everything labeled on it. And then up here, that looks like the schematic to me. And then there's a picture of the outside of it. And that's what it comes in the box. So you could order one of these if you wanted to from ARDF.CN. It is in Chinese. So if you speak Chinese, more power to you. If you don't, there's always you know, translate extensions you can install on your computer. I happen to have Google Translate, which is why some of this is in English and some of it, it didn't translate. I'm assuming this is added to your cart. It says something, let's see what it says. Copy. Paste. Please choose a color. Cool. If you want to order one of these, just go to the website shown right down there http colon forward slash forward slash www.ardf.cn don't just put in ardf.cn because i did that and took me to something confusing in windows so yeah and you should be able to here i'll show you the front page which is where i went i scrolled down here i hit this right here which was the short range transmitters and then i just clicked on the one that looked like the one i have it's the third one and then you could order it it'll tell you to choose a color it's also apparently out of stock right now all right so i took a few beauty shots of the front of the board the back of the board and then just you know something like that to put on the thumbnail 
So I'm gonna do a quick little time lapse of me putting this together. We're done. So you may have noticed while you were looking at the time lapse that I kind of, you know, pulled out a knife real quick and did some cutting on the plastic. I'll tell you why I did that in just a second while I put my knife away. All right. So the reason I did that is because this button, which if you listen really closely, it actually like makes a clicking sound. This button didn't work because there was plastic in the way. So I cut off the plastic, shaved it off a little bit to make sure that this button actually did work because we need this button to work so that we can switch between the fairy bar antenna and the whip antenna, which is important for direction finding, which I explained in my previous video, QRP ARDF transmitter kit build and testing, which is right up there in that corner. And also a little bit in this video, if you didn't remember, Alright guys, so I took this apart, showed you it inside, realized that there's a link on there, and there's always been a link on there, and I'm just hella blind. So I went to the link, showed you a little bit about that. I will be sure to put this link in the description of my video, and I will also link the video in which I built a transmitter to go with this receiver, and then used the receiver to find the transmitter, which I had T.O. hide. My lovely father. So, that is the end of today's video. Any questions, comments, concerns? Put them in the comments. You know, they're called comments for a reason. Uh, be sure to like, uh, I was going to say comment again. Be sure to like and subscribe if you would like to. And thanks for watching. See you next time.